start recording. I'll wait for everybody to get that. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is just open up our shoulders. Um, I'm going to take my broomstick, or if you're using a towel, just make sure it's uh, taut, right? So um, from here, I'm going to have uh, my shoulders like pinched back, shoulder blades back, my chest is nice and proud, and I'm going to take the towel or the uh, broomstick, and I'm going to bring it up overhead trying to go all the way up and then I'm going to try to bring this broomstick all the way back behind my lower back and I'm going to get, I don't know, let's get 10. If you can, try to keep your elbows straight. Don't let your elbows relax. If you can't get behind without relaxing your elbows or bending your elbows, then that's totally fine. Don't worry about it. We're just going to open up these shoulders open up our chest, get that full range of motion with the, with the stick. So I'm going to get about 10. I don't know. I'm not really counting. So I'm going to get one more. Good. And then from here, I'm going to hold it straight out and I'm just going to get a twist. Try to keep your hips facing forward. Get a little T-spine stretch here. Keep those hips nice and straight. Focus on the upper body moving. All right, put it down, shake it out. The next one, you're going to be laying on the ground. So this is called a glide. So I'm going to lay on my side, sim similar to the lying windmill. So I'm going to lay on my side. I got one leg straight, one leg bent, and I'm just going to relax my knee on the ground. It's okay if it's on the ground, but I do want it up about 90 degrees. Other arm is going to be uh, lined up with my shoulder, and then the other hand is going to be on top, so my hands are sandwiched. I'm going to relax my head onto the ground, and then I'm going to overreach, and I'm going to glide my hand past my other hand. I'm going to overreach, go as far as I can, and then come back to center. I'm going to get, I don't know, let's get eight. That's it, overreach. You'll feel that stretch on the shoulder, on the ground. This is also a good thoracic stretch as well, or mobility for this. And then when you're ready, you're just going to switch sides. One leg is straight, one leg is bent, 90 degrees, arm is straight out, lined up with your shoulder. You're going to put your hand on top, and you're just going to overreach. Let's get about eight. Let's make sure that I have my video pinned. I did it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. 
after you get about eight of those, we're gonna open it up. This is called a T. So you're just gonna take your hand and you're gonna open it up. You're trying to bring your hand as close to the mat as you can get it, but everybody is different and everybody's mobility and their range of motion is gonna be different. So I'm reaching up and I'm just trying to open up. I'm trying to drop that shoulder and that hand down to the mat. And in the ideal world, my hand would be touching the mat. Try to keep your knee down on the ground. If you feel like your knee is lifting, I'd rather see you hold your knee, gently hold your knee down, and then don't reach back as far. So if you feel like your knee is lifting in order to touch the ground, hold the knee, and then don't get as low to the ground as you can. That's it. Open and close maybe like five or six times and then switch sides. And these are things that you could do every day on your own. And you'll notice that the more you do it, the better range of motion you'll get. We're all so rolled in from sitting in front of the computer. We're going to get like five or six. And then when you're done, you can just sit up. All right, the next one, if you have a, a yoga block or a foam roller or maybe a pillow so we can get some lying windmills, I feel like most of you have done this with me before. If you have this, this is great. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. Don't worry about it. But we're going to get in the same position that we got into just a minute ago. So one leg is straight, one leg is bent 90 degrees, and I'm going to rest my leg onto the yoga mat or the, uh, the foam roller. And then I'm going to use this hand just to keep my leg down, 90 degrees, knee behind my hip. And then I'm gonna reach across like I did earlier with those glides, but now the back of my hand is touching the ground. I'm gonna reach over and then I'm gonna come up overhead and I'm gonna trace my fingers onto the ground and open up my shoulder. I'm gonna get five and then switch sides. Yep. Try to keep your fingertips on the ground if you can. Trace the ground. Come all the way back. And then back to center. Get like five of those. So what we're doing is getting our shoulders ready for a load, an overhead load, and we're getting our thoracic spine. We're getting some mobility in the thoracic spine to kind of wake it up because we're going to be requiring um, our thoracic spine to be pretty mobile. We're going to be asking a lot of our spine, of our shoulder, of our hips, and even our hamstrings. Whenever you're ready, just switch sides.
All right. And then the next one, I'm going to be kneeling. So I'm on my knees. And then I'm going to uh, shift my weight back into my heels a little bit. And I'm going to put one hand up on my head, one hand on the ground. And I'm going to bring my elbow to my other elbow. And then I'm going to open it up as best as I can. So I'm going to sit my weight back, bring my heel or uh, elbow to my elbow or my arm. And then I'm going to open it up. So try that. Maybe like five or six per side. That's it. Nice job. Again, we're going to get five or six. Here's Russ. And when you're done that, we're going to stand up and we're going to get our hamstrings a little bit. So we're going to start. I've been doing this one in the morning um, with Wake Up with Kate. Uh, we're going to start with this one and then we'll advance to a little bit more uh, aggressive stretch. So I'm going to put my left leg forward, my right leg back, my left leg. I'm going to think about bringing my toes up. I'm going to flex my calf muscle, flex my quad. My knee is relatively locked. Uh, however, when I get down to the ground, if I need a little assistance, I'm going to bend my knee a little bit, but the back leg is going to be bent. Back leg bent, front leg locked, and I'm just going to reach down to the ground and try to get as close to the ground as I can. There we go. So I need to bring this leg a little further for me. I'm going to bend my knee. Other leg stays straight. And I should feel a hamstring stretch in the leg that's straight. So try that. If you can, try to graze your fingers against the ground. That's it. And if you can't reach it, don't worry about it. Everyone's mobility is different. Get like 10 and then switch sides. Good job. And then when you're done, just shake it out. We're going to do another stretch for the, for the hamstrings. Okay. So this one's similar, except it's static. So, or pretty much static. So I'm going to have one leg forward. Toes are up. Leg is locked. This leg is going to bend. And what's going to happen is I'm going to breathe in and push through my heel. So I'm going to breathe in, push through my heel. I'm going to exhale and I'm going to sit my hips back. Breathe in, exhale. Breathe in, exhale. 
So the idea is, is every time you exhale, you're getting lower, lower, lower into your hip hinge, and you're getting a stretch in your hamstring. So try not to come up until you got maybe four or five exhales. So try that. I'm going like this with my hands just to demonstrate what my body is doing. You don't have to do that. <laughs> I was just showing you that I'm breathing in and I'm pushing my weight through my heel and then I'm exhaling and I'm sitting my hips back. Try to get like four or five exhales on each side. All right, shake it out. All right, so like I said, the windmill and uh, not, not so much a bed press, but the windmill requires a lot of hip mobility shoulder mobility and strength and hamstring flexibility so if your hamstrings are super tight it might be limiting you to get it getting deep in your windmill so try not to compare yourself to somebody else including me because everybody moves differently and when you go to these strong first certs um, whenever they demo the windmill or the bent press they just show the wide variety of um, styles so there's some key things that you want to keep in mind yes but everybody's body is going to move a little bit differently. Um, all right, so I wanted to start off with um, the kneeling uh, windmill, the half windmill. We do that a lot, um, especially in the morning. So I wanted to go over that real quick. So I'm going to get into um, a lunge position. So I got one leg forward, one leg back. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this hip – is opened up a little bit so I got a little angle I don't want to be too narrow so I'm gonna open it up and then from here I'm gonna think about chopping my hip right I want to push my hip towards my heel so don't worry about touching the ground just yet all I want you to practice is bringing that butt down to your heel some people like to get into a uh, like the windshield wiper, uh, I keep my legs straight and my toes relaxed, but some people like to go here. They find that more helpful. I don't, I find it like crowded. So I like to keep my foot here, but I want you to focus on bringing your chest down and your hips back. Cause this is going to be the same when you're standing. So your hips are bringing your head down. And when I bring my hips back, Right now I have my left leg forward, so I'm trying to bring my right butt cheek to my right heel. I'm not coming straight down. There's a little bit of a T-spine. I'm opening up my chest, I'm bringing my shoulder back, my other shoulder down, and I'm pushing my hip back to my heel. So try that. So I know when I was looking at UBLT, it looked like you were going straight back. So try to bring your left butt cheek to your left heel. Yep, now turn your chest, turn your right shoulder up to the sky. Yep, so that's the kind of motion that you want with the hip hinge. Yeah, right there, uh-huh. Nice, Caroline. A meet a little bit more of a hip hinge, so try bringing your butt down to your heel, yeah. So come up for me. Come up. All right. So now let your hips lead the way. Don't bring your head down unless your hips take you there. Good. Now let's try taking your, I think it's your left shoulder. You're going to take your left shoulder up to the sky when you do that. Yeah. See that T-spine, that rotation, that twist? That's what you want. Yep. So your hips are leading the way. I would slow it down a little bit so you don't drop so quickly. So watch me real quick. So you're doing hips first, and then you're starting to turn. Try to do it all together. Try 
do it all together. So you're twisting and pushing your hip back. Yeah, uh-huh. Cool. I just want to make sure everybody looks good before we move on. Sorry. You can switch legs, too. Uh, let's see. Anna, Anna, uh, can you bring your... Uh, what is that? Can you bring your left leg closer to the foam roller, maybe? Don't be so stretched out. And bring your heel closer to your body. So, like, not so big. Bring it in. Yeah. Now try it. So you're going to rotate your right shoulder up and your left shoulder down. No, wait, I'm sorry, I have it backwards. Your right shoulder down, your left shoulder up. Good. Now, let's try taking your right heel and turning it towards, like, the kitchen. So, yeah, there you go. I want to open up your hips more. You look really narrow. That's it. Yep, that looks better. I think you were too closed. That's it, Jen. That's it. Guthrie, good. Connie, that's good. All right, so now we're just going to drop it down to our forearm. So you can do this different ways. So the person who taught me this taught me to bring my hand, my fingertips in line with my toes. So uh, elbow, wrist, fingers are facing my foot. But I've also seen people do it this way, too. I don't think it matters. I think as long as your shoulders are stacked. So I'm going to hip hinge. I'm going to get that T-spine rotation. And I'm going to come down to my forearm. I'm going to raise my hand. And I'm going to chop at the hip. I'm going to come down to my forearm. This is the way I was taught. But I've also seen people go like this. right? I don't think it matters. As long as your shoulders are stacked, you have a twist in your back, and your hips are being pushed back into a hip hinge. So from the side, hip hinge, T-spine rotation, come down to your forearm, hang out here for a few seconds, and then come up. The key thing is that my hips are leading the way. I'm not just dropping my head down. So let your hips push back. Uh, Geraldine, can you push your hips back more when you go down? So push, yes, uh-huh, and then drop it down. There you go. So I'm looking at your... Uh, leg that's up and it just looked like you were like yeah I'm watching that and I want to see a hamstring stretch so you're gonna go down yeah right there can you feel the difference with that okay cool nice Maria you're really mobile too Maria <laughs> that's it Guthrie nice hip hinge that's it nice Connie Um, Jen, I can't, can you tilt the camera down a little bit more so I can see the floor a little bit? There you go. Can you do it again for me? Good. I think that your shoulder, your elbow is not under your shoulder, Jen. So you're a little bit, it's almost like you're over committing. So like, you're going here. Think about just dropping your arm down so I'm not here. I don't want to rest. I want to stack. Yeah. Cool. All right, so that's called the half windmill. Um, and now if you have a kettlebell or a weight, I just wanted to get into that position, not all the way at the bottom, but I want to get in the half kneeling position. And it could be even five pounds. I just want you to feel uh, the weight in your hand. So I'm just going to use a dumbbell. So I'm going to get into the half kneeling position. I got my right leg forward. So therefore, I'm going to put the bell or the weight in my right arm, and I'm just going to press it up. And when I press it up, I'm thinking about packing my shoulder. I want to bring that shoulder blade closer to my ribs, right? I want to pack it in. And I just want to hold it here for like 10, 20 seconds. I want to feel the weight, elbows locked, wrist is straight, shoulders packed. So try that for me. Just count to like 10 and then switch sides. When you switch sides, 
Bring your other leg forward, left leg, left arm has the weight. Pack your shoulder. All, all the point of this is just to have you feel the weight overhead in this position, packing your shoulder, activating those muscles. And whenever you're ready, just switch sides. Just count to like 10 or something. That's it. Thinking about pulling that shoulder into its socket closer to the rib cage. Good. And then Terry, just so you know, I'm having a hard time seeing you. I'm not neglecting you. I just, it's a little dark in your room, just so you know. And then, yeah, maybe, oh, there we go. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> cool. All right. So now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to hit hinge now. So just now we were sitting in the kneeling position, the half kneeling position. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to do left leg, left side has the bell. I'm going to press it up like I just did. I'm going to pack my shoulder, make sure that my shoulder is close to my rib cage, my elbows locked, my wrist is straight. I'm going to keep my eyes on the bell. It's important to keep my eyes up and I'm going to hip hinge. I'm going to chop. I'm going to chop that hip down. My hips are leading the way, and then I'm going to bring my forearm down to the ground. I should feel a hamstring stretch. My lat is nice and tight. My shoulder is packed. I'm going to hang out here for, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, and then I'm going to push through my forearm and stand up. So try to get a few of those. That's called a half windmill. The idea is your hips are hinging. Your eyes are on the bell. That's it. Nice, Terry. Great. Shoulders are stacked, shoulders packed. That's it, nice, nice Jackie. I almost called you Christina. <laughs> you guys look alike. Nice job. That's it, push those hips back. Nice Caroline. And whenever you're ready, just switch sides. You're just feeling this out at this point, it's not. Not a certain number of reps, it doesn't matter. That's it, Maria. Nice, Anna. Good job. So what I'm looking at is that your hips are hinging, that your shoulders are stacked, that it looks nice and safe, that you're not rounding at the spine at all, and that you're not falling forward with your head. You're letting your hips push you into place. Good. Uh, Geraldine, I think you probably could have hip hinged more. You started to round your, your side to get to the ground. Let your hips go down. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. Good. Nice. And then whenever you're done, just put it down, and then we'll move on. So that's the half windmill. That's a good, safe way to explain the hip hinge and bring in your head down, right? Because you're close to the floor. <laughs> so it's a little bit safer. Um, so the next one is a body weight windmill. So I'm going to go over that. Um, you don't need any weights right now. So let's just talk about the stance. I wish I had a camera person that they could adjust to me. Okay. Feel really far away. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the windmill. So um, the feet are always going to turn away from the bell. So let's imagine that my right arm is up. I don't want to hold it up right now. Uh, I'm going to take my feet and I'm gonna turn them to the left. So I'm just gonna lift my toes and I'm gonna get up onto my heels and I'm just gonna pivot. Legs are gonna be about hip width or shoulder width apart. You don't wanna to be too wide. You definitely don't, oh, excuse me, definitely don't wanna be narrow. So I wanna start out about shoulder width apart. I'm gonna lift my toes and I'm gonna turn them to the left. 
All right, so what that does is it helps position my feet. Think about one foot being about 45 degrees and the other foot being about 30 degrees. They're not going to mirror each other. It's not going to be perfect. All right, so there's a little angle there. Another option that I've seen people do, which I don't do, is take one step forward. And that's creating a little angle with your hips. Um, but again, I was never taught that way, so I don't do it that way. So my toes are going to turn, my heels, I'm going to get up on the heels, turn them away. 45, 30. From here, I want to, um, all the weight should be on my right leg or my rear leg, because let's imagine that I'm holding on to the bell. And then this leg is going to stay locked, my right leg is going to stay locked, and my left leg is going to soften. So you just saw that my hip kind of kicked out. I put all my weight on my back leg, and then to ensure that it's there, I'm just going to tap my toes. If I can tap my toes, that means that most of my weight is on my back leg, right? So I got a little hip hinge here. Then from there, <clears throat> I'm going to chop my hip, right? I'm going to think about bringing this hip back behind me, right? So I'm just going to chop my hip. All my weight is on that back heel. My knee is straight. My left leg is bent. Now I'm going to incorporate a little bit of a T-spine stretch. Uh, actually, let's move on. Let's not move on yet. So let me just see you get into the foot positioning with your lower half of your body. And when you get your feet right, tap that lead leg. Remind yourself that that lead leg is supposed to be soft. So who's that? Uh, Jackie, bend your right leg. I think it's your right leg. Bend the front leg. Yeah. Now, shift your weight onto your heel of the other leg. Yeah. And now you can tap that front foot. Cool. And then Maria, just make sure that both of your knees aren't bent. Only the one in the front. Yep. So don't worry about bringing your chest down just yet, Maria. Yeah. Stay upright. Yeah. Get the weight transfer onto the heel first. Yeah. Tap your foot. Good. So if you can tap your, and then Guthrie, bend your front leg more for me. Good. Now you're going to shift your weight onto your one leg. There you go. Mm -hmm. So one leg is locked. One leg is bent. You can tap your foot. You know the weight is on that back foot. Everyone looks good. Cool. Now... Now that we got our feet in the right spot, we got our weight onto our back hip, we're going to start to chop that hip. At the same time, it's important to rotate and look up. So we're going to chop and rotate. Come up. Push that hip back. Put that weight onto that heel. And rotate that chest. Open up that chest. That's it. Nice, Caroline. That's it, Terry. Great. Mm -hmm. Nice, Maria. I think you can probably go wider with your, with your legs. A little wider. There you go. And then... I'm trying to... Anna, I feel like I'm not looking at you right. I don't know what's wrong. All right. Do that again. I think you're looking in the wrong way. Can you try twisting the other way? Putting your weight. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I was like, why does this look weird? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So now you're able to push your weight onto your back leg while you rotate and look up at your imaginary bell. Yeah. And then BLT, can I see you? Good. Very nice. Nice mobility. That's a gel D. Nice. Cool. So then we can take that an extra step if we needed it, which you might. I don't know. And we can position ourselves next to a wall, which I think Amit was already doing. We can position ourselves next to a wall. It's all crooked. Oh my goodness. Okay. Cool. All right. So now we can position ourselves next to a wall if you have that option. You're going to turn your feet away like you did earlier. So for me, my feet are going to my left. I'm going to chop my right hip and I'm going to rotate my chest up to the sky and I'm going to touch the wall, right? My leg stays locked, 
my front leg is relaxed, and my one butt cheek is touching the wall. Not both. Not both. Rotate. Try to touch the wall with your one butt cheek. That's it. So then, Jackie, bend your left leg. Yep. And then push your weight onto your heel. Remember to tap your front foot. If you can't tap it, your weight is shifted wrong. Try turning your right foot in towards your left foot. There you go. Yep. Now you're going to rotate and shift your weight onto your right heel. And then stop. Come up. Um, can you see yourself in the, in the computer screen? Yeah? Okay. Um, so just stand back up again. Now look at yourself in the computer, watch yourself go down. So do it again and just watch yourself. So watch that right hip. Keep watching it. Keep, yes, that's what I was looking for. Where earlier you were bringing it in the opposite direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's the windmill body weight. So um, let's stand up and get a couple of um, presses, and then we're going to hold the bell. Let's count just to like 10 seconds just to feel the weight overhead before we put a weight in our hand. So I'm not going to go super heavy today just because I'm tired from yesterday. But all I'm going to do is press the bell up, pack my shoulder, bring that shoulder down towards the rib cage. And just get comfortable holding the weight up overhead. I'm going to count to 10 seconds. I'm going to bring it down. Relax for a second in the rack. Press it up again. Pack my shoulder. Just get a couple presses. Feel the weight overhead. Pull the shoulder into its joint. Bring it closer to the rib cage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Oh, and then Connie, you're probably going to have to do this either by your staircase where there's like, I don't, I don't know if there's like a, man, you can't do any of these in your living room? I can't, but the dogs get in the way. The dogs? Yeah, so, um, yeah, next time I guess I'll have to just go outside. Oh. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, re warm. I'm recording this, so you can play it back at your convenience and try to do the drill standing up with the bell. Okay. But I would keep watching. Yeah, thank you. So after you get a few of those and you start to feel the weight up overhead, get comfortable with that. Now we're going to try the windmill with the weight. So let me just show you first before you start doing it. So I'm going to press the bell, or snatch it, or push press it, whatever you need to do, but the bell's going up overhead. My shoulder's packed. I'm going to take my feet and I'm going to turn away from the bell. So it's in my right arm, so my feet are going to go to the left. Think about 45, 30. I'm going to soften my front knee, right? Soften my front knee. My weight just kind of shifted a little bit onto the heel. I can tap my toes. Good. I'm going to rotate my chest up at the bell and hip hinge at the same time, ideally. So both of these are working together. So I'm going to hip hinge and I'm going to shift my weight onto my heel. Um, I hip hinged. This hand is just going to keep me honest. It's going to graze my inner leg and then I'm going to come up and squeeze. I don't care about touching the ground. There's so many bad windmills on Instagram. Now that you have a better understanding of it, when you see this, you're going to be like, well, what the fuck is that? You're basically just falling over. So think about shifting the weight onto your heel, and it's not about how low your hand can get down to the ground. It's about what is your hip doing. So I'm going to press the bell up. I'm going to pack my shoulder. I'm going to rotate, and I'm going to hip hinge. I'm going to push all that weight on my heel. I physically can't go any deeper. I can feel my hamstrings like, whoa, what are you doing? My shoulders are packed. 
My hand is here grazing my inner thigh. This leg is locked. There's no weight. There's no weight over here. It's all on my back heel, and then I'm going to stand up and squeeze. So if you want to try it with the weight, go ahead. I'd suggest a light weight, or you can continue to do body weight. It's all about what your hips are doing and not so much about how low your head can get. Good. Now, Anna, push your hip towards that painting behind you. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I think I have this video. I have myself unpinned, so you can come back and watch this video and watch your hips, watch them move from one spot to the next. Yeah. Um, I have a question, Kate. Nice, Guthrie. Uh-huh. How deep are you supposed to go? Because I can touch the ground. I just don't know where is like the best place to stop. Can I see, can I see what you're doing? Because the last time I looked, your, both of your knees were bent. So you're really mobile. So you're probably going to have a hard time knowing your limit. So yeah, that's what I was okay. So you're starting to round your back. So you definitely don't want to round your spine at all. Okay. Um, and then also just make sure that you're shifting onto that leg without a bent leg because it looks bent from here, but it's hard to tell. Make sure that right leg stays locked, that knee. Yeah. So I would stand like right there. I would stop right around there. Just because your back is going to start the round and okay. it's hard, hard to tell from here. I think that I think that right leg is starting to bend to get you deeper. Right there looks good. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then come up. Yeah, I probably wouldn't go any deeper than that. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Good. And then stand all the way up, Terry. Good. Hmm. Terry, um, I can't tell. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's so much better. I was trying to tell if your legs maybe were too narrow, but I couldn't tell. Try that again for me. Hmm. Go ahead, do it again. It's so hard with the video. Um, but I th think you're falling forward a little bit. I'd like to see your hip move a little bit close. Yes, like that. It feels like your hamstring's gonna pop. <laughs> not not very not very uh reassuring to hear that but the breathing it's there's no like set way uh they say when you exert yourself you exhale so let's say I had a really heavy bell up overhead when I'm coming up and standing I would probably exhale so like when I take the cert uh, they make me do it with a 16 kilo which isn't super super heavy but when you're doing multiple reps and you're holding it and you're thinking about all these things and you're anxious you're going to start breathing heavy anyway so I tend to breathe in and then pause, and then exhale, just to show that, like, I'm blocking it out at the top. And so I guess it would depend on how heavy the bell is, with the breathing. But usually when you exert yourself, you exhale. Yeah. Good. Now shift your weight BLT towards the dresser. Nope. No, no, no. Yep. But, like, pop your hip. There you go. Yes. Right there. Uh-huh. And now push into your heel. Good. And then turn a little more. Bring your hand down a little lower. That's it. Cool. That look good to me. Nice and meet. So if you guys can uh, look at Amit's video, if you don't mind Amit, you can put it down for a second, just shake it out. Um, I don't know if you can pin their video, but um, just shake it out. 
All right, so Amit's going to pick up the bell. I think it was with the left arm that you just did. Yeah. All right, and then they're going to press it up, and then they're going to fix their feet. Good. Now watch their left hip get closer to the edge of the windowsill. Yeah, it's almost like you can't see any light shining through, and then now you can see the light, and now you can't. It's covered, right, because they're hip hinging, and some of you are still missing that. You're kind of like... You th I think you, I think your hip hinging may be straight back instead of to the one hip. Yeah, I think that's what Terry was doing. Try the other side. Cool. So the bell goes up. All right. So the mobility on that side is a little different than the other side. And I have the same problem. Yeah, my one side's a little bit. I always show my right arm up because my right arm side look gets real deep, and the left side doesn't get as deep. And that's okay. Yeah, as long as you're still shifting the hip back. So that's like the hardest part, and I find that standing next to the wall, thanks, Amit, uh, what muscles would you feel the correct versus incorrect in the hip hinge? So, uh, and do you feel more in the hamstrings or the glutes? Um, so you would feel it all down the back of your hamstring, all the way down the back of your leg if you're doing it correctly. If you're not doing it correctly, you might be like, I don't feel what I'm supposed to be feeling. I don't understand. Um, and then again, depending on how heavy the weight is, you might feel it in your lat. But mostly with the hip hinge, you should feel it in your hamstrings. Like it feels like it's being tugged and it can't go any further or else your kneecap's going to pop out of place. Yeah, Caroline, that's good. Whoop. Oh, no. Are you guys still there? Okay. <laughs> Charlie must have logged on, tried to log on for the Muay Thai scoring. He bumped me out. Uh, but, yeah, Caroline, so when I when you just did that, I watched, like, your hip go further on the um, the bookshelf. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good to tape yourself. I used to do this when I was first learning this for the cert, for my level two cert. Um, I used to do it at the old gym, and I would set up my phone from a side profile, and I would touch the wall with my one butt cheek. But it takes a while to, like, feel how it's supposed to feel in your body, and it's kind of hard to describe other than shift your weight onto your back leg, feel your hamstring engage, and also rotate at the same time. Yeah. So just going to take practice um, and feeling, yeah, so lock that leg, Maria. That's it. Cool. Right to think that your hip is following the line of the heel. Yes. Yeah. So like, um, I want my... So when I turn, creating that angle for my hip, for that one hip, not this one. Well, I mean, this one is going to hip hinge a little bit. But think about heel and hip and shoulder stacked. And if anything, you're going to bring this hip past your heel, past your heel. And the only way to get deeper into the hip hinge is to rotate my T-spine. So I don't know if you can see it in the video from like comparison with something on the wall behind me, but I should be shifting my weight this way and not this way and not this way. So set up your cell phone, put some things in the background so you can have some point of reference, film it and then watch it and then make any corrections, but you're trying to push your hip back and not falling forward or pushing both hips back only the one cool that sound good all right i'm probably gonna go now um if you guys have any questions let me know if you want to videotape yourself and you want to ask me questions or send the videos please i'll i'll love to look at your videos cool and then janine is supposed to show me how to use an editor so i can edit videos and draw angles and color code and put arrows and point to things to help things to explain things better because I'm not good at editing and stuff like that but she said she would show me how to do it so all right bye everybody enjoy the rest of your Sunday thank you <laughs> thank you thank you